my slides are in order this time. You mean you just wipe? Yeah, and I, I have heard that they may not be welcome back. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know. Good morning, and welcome to Coffee Pot Bible Fellowship here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, the Sap Brothers Truck Stop. We are going to get started this morning with uh, Owen and Jerry. They're going to do a couple spells. Well, they're going to do one song, and I'll be back to do prayer, prayer requests. Sure about that? Yeah, no. <laughs>
Well, good morning, and uh, I'll agree with Jerry Fogg this morning. He commented that, praise the Lord, he gave us one more day. <laughs> so, uh, join me in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us. Um, be with our drivers out here uh, navigating our highways, Lord, um, dealing with everything they have to deal with. Um, Lord, be with those that uh, we've been praying for, for cancer, Caleb, Jeremy, Penny, and others we've heard about. Um, be with those with uh, other health needs. We have uh, Linda we're mentioning here. Be with our missionaries, those that are out on the field and those that are uh, trying to get out back on the field, Lord. Um, be with the Ukraine and the people over there and the situation they're in. Lord, be with our country and our leaders. Uh, we pray for their salvation. We pray for uh, God to lead them. We know that uh, everybody that's in power is uh, there because of you, Lord. But uh, we uh, really pray for you to help them out and, and uh, help lead our country the way it should go, Lord. And pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Okay, we're going to do near the cross. Takes me a minute to get moving here. <laughs> Morning, everybody. We're going to be looking today at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. That's 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. 
tried not to keep be too long-winded tonight. I tried going through this again last night, cutting some out and shortening it up, and I don't know how successful I was, but 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10, and it begins, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, and after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your name today, Lord. We ask, Lord, your guidance, that, Lord, you just guide and direct me as I deliver your message today, Lord. Just make sure that it is your message, Lord. And, Lord, open hearts that it can come clearly through and be accepted, Lord, today. If there's one out there that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, let this be the day they come to that saving knowledge of you. Just guide and direct in this service and throughout this day. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Verse 8 again says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We're to be sober, we're to be vigilant. But what does it mean to be sober? You know, we all think of, you know, not drinking, staying away from alcoholic beverages. And that is part of it, but it's to be clear-headed, attentive, not scatterbrained. You're focused. What does it mean to be vigilant? Vigilant is to be aware, to be prepared, to be on guard, to be watchful. So we are to be clear-headed, but watchful prepared, always on guard. We are told to be sober and vigilant because our adversary, the devil. The devil is out there. But who is the devil? Well, okay. Got some of your music tied up in my ear. <laughs> but who is the devil? The devil is not a cute little guy in a red suit with a tail and horns, you know? Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 15 tells us, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For he hath said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. The devil is a fallen angel. He got prideful. He thought he could be equal with God. We have that same problem once in a while. Like all angels, he was created by God. Moving on, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 talks about him saying, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The serpent, otherwise known as the devil, deceived the woman and caused her to question God's command. He is a deceiver. He tries to deceive us daily. And how often have we all fallen victim to that? 1 John 
chapter 3, verses 7 and 8 tells us, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, and he is righteous. He that cometh sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The devil is behind all sin. Jesus was brought into the world to provide us a way to escape from the devil. He is the perfect sacrifice to destroy the works of the devil. And it goes on in that verse 8. And what does our adversary the devil do? As a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking who he may de devour. A roaring lion, a lion roars when it's hungry. A lion hunts, but when they hunt, they hunt for the easy prey. When they're going after the gazelles, they don't go by the fast after the fastest, strongest one. They go by the after the stragglers, the weakened, the ones that are easy to catch. Those who are and it, the devil does the same with us. He's seeking out those that are weakened, and who are weakened? Those who are lost. That do not know the Lord as their Savior. They're on their own. They don't have the strength of God behind them. Those who fall away from God, they're weakened. Those of us, and we are all guilty of this one, those of us who serve the Lord, but every now and then get this stupid idea in our heads that we're going to do it our way. Verse 9 says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We are to resist steadfast in the faith. Stand strong with the Lord. Pray unceasingly. Request the prayers of others. Turn to the scriptures. Knowing the same afflictions are in our brethren we're in the world. There's nothing new, folks. There is no new sins out there. And God will help us. My, fa my favorite verse in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. We're not alone in our trials if we're saved. If we're saved, we've got God on our side. Many others have suffered the same trials that we did. That's one of the things that got me through basic training in the Army. Man, well, that was tough at times. But I get to thinking, you know what? There's been millions of men before me that got through this. Why can't I? And God is with us through those trials. We have his strength that we can lean on. He will not allow us to face trials that we cannot handle with his help. He will always make a way out for us. He'll always show us the way out if we're willing to listen. Verse 10 tells us, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you but the God of all grace. John 1 verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and he beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 through 9 says, But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are we saved through faith that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast but who is Jesus that he can save us from the deceitfulness of the devil well he is the creator Genesis 1 1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth John 1 verse 1 through 5 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not of anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness compre comprehended it not and the word was our Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior God the Father and Jesus are one and the same he has the authority over everything in creation because he created it he has the power over everything he created that includes the devil Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says I am the Omega or the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty God the Creator that all-powerful has always been he is now and he will always be Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 3 tells us and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold of the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and a set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more Till a thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season God will send an angel from heaven to lock up the devil for a thousand years he has the power he has the authority to do that Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 through 10 says and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and come past the camp of the Saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever God will defeat the devil in the end Amen. if we are saved by the Lord today we are part of his army we are victorious 
And this is the God of grace. The one who has the power to defeat the devil. Who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He has the desire to save us. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. That means he loved me. He loved you. He loved us enough to save us from the penalty of our sins. Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, a perfect sacrifice for our sins. I'm not going to go into it now because of time, but you can read one account of this in Matthew chapter 15, verse 25 to 37. It talks about the crucifixion of Christ. Yes, he gave his life for us, and he did it willingly. And then he rose again from the dead on the third day. He defeated death. He defeated the devil. A dead God can do nothing for us, but he is alive. We celebrated that a couple weeks ago on Easter Sunday. And again, I'm not going to go into it now because of time's sake, but Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 8 tells us about the resurrection of Christ. He was seen by many people. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 through 8 tells us, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. He was seen by men. We have witnesses in the Bible. And then he ascended into heaven. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into it, but Acts chapter 1, verses 6 and 11 talks about the ascension. Our living God, Jesus Christ, gave his life as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. He then rose from the dead. He was seen by hundreds and then ascended into heaven to intercede for us, to strengthen us, to fight the devil for us. And why was this needed? Because he was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was born of a virgin with God being his father. He lived a perfect and righteous life this qualifies him to be that perfect sacrifice. We're full of sin. I can't do it. I can't pay the price for my sin. I don't have the strength to fight off the devil. But he does. He is giving us that gift of salvation. All we have to do is accept it. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. If you've ever told a lie, you're a sinner. If you've ever taken something that wasn't yours, you're a sinner. If you ever put anything in life more important than God, you're a sinner. We're all sinners. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death. That means eternal separation from God. God's in heaven. To be eternally separated from him, that means in hell forever. 
but the gift of God, that free gift he's offering, is eternal life. Life. No separation from God. That's in heaven. Eternal life with Christ Jesus our Lord. And all we have to do is accept it. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his life, his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us that much. Romans 10, verses 8 through 11 says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, that in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whoever, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 10 started out, but the God of all grace, which hath called us unto his eternal glory in Christ Jesus. That verse continues. After that, ye have suffered a while. Yes, if we are saved, we are going to be harassed a little bit about it. We're going to be persecuted some for it. People are going to laugh at us and scoff at us and make jokes about us <clears throat> but he will make us perfect he will establish us he will strengthen us he will settle us God will strengthen us through our trials he will stand with us through those trials and we unlike those that laugh at us we have a heavenly home to look forward to how do we resist the devil? By accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and following him. You know, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior today, you can contact us by various means here at the chapel. We would love to have the opportunity to take you through the scriptures and show you what God has to say about it. We can't save you, but God can. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time once again, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you just do a mighty work with this message, Lord, that you just let, let those that are out there that are saved glean from it, Lord, and have a closer walk with thee, Lord. Those who might not know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, let them come to that saving knowledge today, Lord. Just guide and direct and be with them. Put your protective arms around them as they go about their, through this day. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus.
today and uh, like Doug said if there's anything that uh, you have questions about or if I'd like to talk to us about there's several ways you can reach out to us and uh, we'd love to see you come by and see us in person sometime so uh, have a good week